Robinson and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Welcome back to the workshop modelers. What I'm going to do now is mix up some epoxy resin and I'm going to thicken it so that we can use it to join that uh, wing tube that we manufactured in the previous video to the fuselage formers. Now there's a couple of ways you can thicken this, but um, there's a right way and a wrong way. Now I will once more re reiterate, I'm not an expert in any of this, I'm just bimbling my way along, so all I'm doing is showing you how I do things. It's not necessarily the right way, but it seems to work for me. Okay, with, with epoxy thickeners, there's two that I use, depending on what I want. So if I want to thicken epoxy to make it into a fillet or something like that, then I use 410 microlite, which is a bit like what you've probably heard of was micro balloons. And it sort of adds, I don't know, little tiny bits of foam or air to the resin. And it makes it fairly light and very easy to sand. Just what you want for fairings and things like that. However, if you want to do what I'm about to do, and that's to create a thick paste that will be really strong, then you need to need, use something called colloidal silica. Now this is, again, as I keep saying, this is my opinion. If you mix colloidal silica with the epoxy, it be, turns it into a very thick paste and it's very hard. So that's what I'm going to be using. So we're just, I'm just adding one plunger of resin to one plunger of hardener. This is the West Systems method of doing it. If you have the plungers on top of the uh, canisters, which I do, it just equals one plunge of each. It makes it a very nice, easy way to mix it. You can do it by weight if you just buy the tins as normal, but I like to do it just by the one plunge. You have got to make sure that the plunger is armed just before you start pressing it. And if you just gently release it, press it a bit and release it a bit, you'll, you'll feel when you arm the plunger. So obviously the, the recipe is one full plunge to one full plunge of uh, resin to hardener. So there we go, we've mixed it together. Now, if we use this, it would work perfectly, but it would run into the joints and down and away and it wouldn't really do what we want it to do. So we need to make it thicker, okay? Now I told you in the last video, the reason this is purple is because the hardener is very old. It's gotta be two or three years old now. Um, I don't get around to using stuff before it expires, um, but it doesn't seem to make any difference to its strength. Um, it probably does, if you were to actually analyze it, it's probably, it's sure strength has probably gone down a little bit. I don't know, maybe it hasn't. But anyway, it's, it's working fine for what I need, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Now into that, I'm going to add colloidal silica. That's one baby food scoop, and then we start to mix it in. You can already see it's started to thicken. I probably mixed up too much epoxy here because I'm going to end up putting three or four scoops of colloidal in this, I think, looking at it. I'm actually going to stop using that spatula because I got that spatula out really to uh, to apply it. I'm going to go to the big one, see if we can get more stirring done a bit quicker, save a bit of video footage. Yes, I've definitely made too much resin here. I should have done it by weight and maybe used half a plunger in each. A 
and as you can see it's starting to to get thicker shouldn't alter the drying time or anything like that or I haven't noticed it altering it but if you have to sand this stuff it's hard work whereas if you use the micro light filler it's not so bad I like the West systems 205 206 at uh, 105 206 resin solution because it doesn't leave a waxy finish on the top surface which some epoxies can do another good epoxy is LS285 resin which uh, is sold by Phil Clark at Fighter Aces but it's a little bit more expensive as you can see we're nearly nearly there that's still sagging I don't want it to sag One more scoop will probably do it. So that's a total of three. I don't want it to drip away from the joint, to stay where I put it. Obviously the, the if, you, if you've got loads of money, um, the preferred adhesive for doing this is high sol. And that's a very expensive epoxy resin, but it's incredibly hard. And you can use it straight from the uh, from the applicator. It tends to come in a a twin nozzle bottle, so you need to buy the applicators, which have a sort of a swirly plastic tube on the end, and it swirls and mixes the resin as you press the plunger. I'm never really sure whether that's a very good way of doing it because I'm sure some gets left in the nozzle that then goes hard I don't know but um, again as I say Phil Clark at Fire Traces uses this stuff a lot uh, and it is it is very good and it is very strong but to be honest I'm not sure how strong this joint needs to be because as I said when I was doing the, the molding video of the carbon tube sleeve the sleeve just really holds the tube in place it doesn't do much more so really can impart that much strength but you don't want the tube to, to move to push away from the ribs so um, anyway as you can see we now have a paste that is not dropping okay it's not sagging at all and that's exactly what we want for this next stage now I'm only going to show a segment of this because it's pretty boring and once you've seen it you've seen it all I'm doing is spreading it with this little stick into the joint, trying to create a filler. It's going to be messy, it's going to be untidy, and it's going to be a bit laborious. I think this is where the high sole gun works, but you've got a very small nozzle in the end of the... It's like a syringe almost on steroids. Just wanted to show you something. Now this Jerry Bates design has always nagged at me that the top of the fuselage is the wrong shape. The rear section is round, it's circular, and I know it is, and it is circular up to this corner here. But coming forward, this one isn't round, or isn't semicircular, nor are any of these. And it's always bugged me, uh, ever since I first saw the the drawings and uh, the first one being built. 
So what I've done is I know the Dave Wormsley one, the fuselage, is fairly accurate until you get to the cowl. So what I thought I'd do, just out of interest, was I'd trace the Dave Wormsley's uh, bulkheads and lay them on top and you can see what I mean. So the width is the same, which is good, that's encouraging. But look at the shape of the top. It is semicircular. Jerry's flattened it off. If we come to this one, actually it's not that one, it's probably about there. And you look at it again, it's been flattened off. So it's difficult to know now what to do. These should be the same size and this one should be very similar because it's, it doesn't do anything at that point. So you can see the semicircular curve has been flattened off and that's been carried right the way through to the cowl and is why the cowl doesn't quite look right either. Um, it's more oval than the shape that Jerry's drawn. So whether I do anything or not, I'm still debating, but I could build up this top section and I could build up these two and I could build up that one. So the jury's still out on that, but this is one of the reasons why you build from your own three view. Otherwise it's a compromise, but there are compromises within this model already. So it might satisfy me enough that if I just raise the curve on the top, raise the radius, that'll appease me enough to carry on with it. Carrying on with that thought, I wondered whether the bottom of the fuselage was, was correct too. This is the Dave Wormsley plan, and for the most part it's pretty accurate, um, and probably would have been a better one to start with. But I had all the parts for the Bates one, so I thought I'd go with that. So F2 is a good typical bulkhead and typical of the shape of the forward fuselage all the way from the rear of the cockpit forward. F2, as you can see there, is right behind the cowl. As I say, F2 is right behind the cowl. This is the Jerry Bates F2. Now the red line is where the Dave Wormsley F2 is. And you can see the dark line is where the Bates F2 is. So it is possible that I can make the Wormsley outline from the Bates one. Obviously this would have been a lot easier before I assembled the fuselage and I put a, should have put some more research into this. It would still be a compromise, but it might be doable and it might make me a little bit happier, shall we say. If we look at how that might translate to the fuselage, the purple lines show what would need to be removed. Not an easy task. Most of it is light ply, so it doesn't, doesn't take too much to remove. But as I say, not an easy task to remove that lot. Then I would need to cut new slots for the quarter formers. These obviously would have to come in much deeper. This, this one <laughs> is almost non-existent, so I may have to move it along and put two either side. I, I don't know. But do you see my point? The shape should be oval not flat. So I think I might have to take this down to the garage, get some power tools on it and see if I can shape this side. Kind of ruins it doesn't it if it, uh, if it doesn't work. That's possibly the end of the project. So I don't really want to end this on a negative note, but this I ju this just isn't right, I'm afraid. So, uh, so there we go. 
let's hope I can make something out of this.